gorgeous, I'm the fairy voice mother and today I'm going to be reacting to Alice in Chains, Love, Hate, Love, Live at the Moor. I've had many requests for Alice in Chains and just basically anything rock and metal. When I don't play something rock and metal it seems to be that you want me to play rock and metal. So here we are, Alice in Chains. Many requests have come up for many different songs but this looked like a nice one. It doesn't look particularly cheery. But we'll see. This next song is about pain. So we can now safely assume, fairy voice children, that this will indeed not be particularly cheery. And it comes at a pertinent time. I just burnt my finger just now. So I am actually experiencing some degree of bodily pain. The lid of the kettle just fell off while I was making my tea, obviously. Bloody English people and tea. It'll be the death of me. Oh yeah. We'll see how my wound develops over the course of this um, video, so that'll be, that'll be quite exciting. I'm still gonna drink it, obviously. It had to be worth something, so. So enchanting, goodness, really interesting tongue. <laughs> and he knows exactly how to use it. To filter resonance. Could becomes could. Thought I could. This is just a simple tongue retraction from uh to er. I don't know if you can see that. Is this really gross if I like try and show you my tongue? I'm gonna try and show you my tongue. If you think that's gross, you can skip like. 10 seconds. Good. I don't know if that added any value to this video or anything. The tongue is so immeasurably important for singing. It occupies so much space in the whole vocal system. We have a wonderful ability to retract and bunch the tongue up to sit heavy on the larynx when we want something like this uh, uh, for that kind of <laughs> timbre. Or we can elongate the tongue and remove the pressure from the larynx to give us access to a clearer, brighter sound now that the tongue won't be absorbing so much of the resonance that the voice is creating. Good. Golly, it's getting a bit red. Something is forming atop my pinky. Anyway, this crazed, perhaps rather malevolent, possessive character is supported with this crazy intense gaze combined with that tight grip on the microphone. Like you feel the tension in his body, you feel the tension in the lyrics, you feel the tension in the space, in the music, a very sparse instrumentation so far. And I just love that feeling when you start listening to a song and you just know it's going somewhere. You don't know exactly where. But it's bloody going. I want to peel the skin from your face. You know, I would say that's pretty malevolent. So much control that distortion was beautiful. 
it's got a screamy quality to it but because there's a pitch there as well and the visual of seeing the pressure build up in his neck and head it's kind of like a bottled up scream of frustration and anger He's very diagonal with his movements. For the distorted notes, it seems that he's kind of diagonally this way, and for when it's cleaner, he approaches it more diagonally this way. And this is a good technical decision because for distortion, we do need support in this open environment to give enough space, as I say, for all the flapping. And when we come in for a clean note, such as He's wanting to lift his larynx a bit to get that kind of more delicate timbre. That way, it pops it in the right places. This is a very introverted performance in a lot of ways. It's very somber. It just beautifully captures that essence of pain. Many of us will be able to relate to that feeling of intense pain. Intense pain. Whether it be physical or mental, they can definitely be as bad as each other. It's certainly mesmerising to hear it musicified. The pinky's burning up. Oh gosh. Oh, bloody hell. analysis of something that is like so far up my street like this is my street these are my people just uh it gets so difficult for me to be like vocal technique but i'ma try mm -hmm. <laughs> i can't keep the distortion up for that long that is such a special line <laughs> amazing for so many reasons most pertinently because it was all done in one breath which would have been so difficult to do on this phrase not only because it is difficult of course to maintain and control distortion because you've got to keep everything flapping at continuous rates of flap when you do pitch distortion like that you have to of course keep the vocal folds doing their little thing but you also have like God knows what other tissue, also requiring consistent pressure for consistent flapping. It's difficult to know exactly what additional tissue is flapping, it's very light. Because he's pronouncing those words, my sick, that means he has to vary the pressure in this environment, which of course makes consistency more difficult. Like if I was to flap this tissue with a hairdryer in a tube, like this, if we were to cover a little bit of that tube, of course the pressure in the tube would change and affect the motion of the tissue. And because this is on such a teeny weeny scale, for example, the male vocal cords are only like 20 millimeters, they are really gonna notice the difference between mm and s. How he's coping with that is amazing. He's very effectively adjusting manually the pressure inside the vocal tract. Maintaining consistent breath pressure and the ability to control your breath pressure is beneficial for all types of singing. To improve this capacity for clean singing, I would suggest Ooh. And a nice one to begin this process for distortion would just be to produce a sound, seeing if you can keep a consistent rumble with your mouth closed. <laughs> the 
there'll be lots of inconsistencies at first but that's the point just kind of establish that little pressure chamber and then once you're more confident of course you can open your mouth and start to do all of this crazy stuff it's such a technically advanced thing to do but it portrays a very fly got this little thing out the freezer that's used for cooling your wine hopefully it will extinguish the flames that reside within my pinky <laughs> This was so gracefully paced. It was extremely intense from the beginning. It's not like the emotions built. It's more like the emotions kind of manifested throughout. He seemed to gradually release more and more of this rage and pain until it was a big full on rage explosion. All out. Ouch. This tilting back here could definitely present a few positive reinforcements for this technique. It is of course unconventional, but then so is distortion, I guess, in terms of what people widely consider as normal singing, it isn't. Unconventional voice use can sometimes require unconventional mannerisms, and that is fabulous. So obviously in this section now, he's definitely giving it a little bit more welly. And that welly has to come from somewhere. In case you are unfamiliar with the term welly, it kind of means... I was gonna say oomph, which is another non-word. It's like, like power, like energy, energy, energy. So he's ramping up the energy within, and that is bound to manifest in his body somehow. If there is a lot of energy build and no attention to detail in terms of posture and rest of the body, then you could be prone to too much pressure build up here, straining and pushing on the actual vocal folds themselves, which although it actually might sound cool for a minute, it's not gonna sound cool in two years time, kind of thing. So by tilting back, notice that he's still able to maintain a very stable, open neck. Perhaps if he took this energy the other way and leaned forwards, that would have perhaps been more of a challenge because this way you've got to hold your neck up. Whereas if you lean back, you've got a bunch of muscles back here called your scalene muscles. You've got nice head support as opposed to like 
a bobblehead. So consistent. I love how specific it is. Oftentimes people do all these different kinds of crazy types of distortion. It will get very guttural and then it will get very screamy and I love that too, but this consistent scream, it kind of hammers home a little bit more that consistent pain, I think. It's all about burn. He doesn't use the vibrato on the distorted notes themselves because the vibrato requires a lot of movement in the larynx. And I mean, there's so many bloody things to control within the larynx right now for him, all of the tissues flapping. The last thing he needs is the bloody larynx moving as well. <laughs> Perfect distorted note, zips it all up to then add the vibrato. And it does kind of give the impression that the actual distorted notes themselves have vibrato because of how tastefully it's juxtaposed. When in fact they don't. I love all the hair, just so much hair. Were all of those technical details going around in his head while he was performing this? I would say definitely not. And if they were, then he's a bloody terrific actor because in order to execute a performance with this amount of gravity and enchantment, that singer, I believe, must necessarily be there in those emotions, residing in those emotions. I just love picking out all the little anatomical reasons why. Um, things sound the way they do. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments or over on my Discord as it would be my absolute pleasure. Have a wonderful day. I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye!